For this video, let's talk about the higher incidence and pattern of low testosterone in younger men. So this is also another thing that really puzzled. So when I started practice about 15 years ago with testosterone, most guys that I would be treating were in their late 40s, 50s. Those were what we call late onset hypogonadism. It's kind of expected. As we get older, testosterone tends to drop. Actually, the studies are showing that there is a more precipitous drop of our testosterone. And that of an average 50-year-old man now compared to the, the 60s and 70s have more than 50% decrease of testosterone. So I used to treat middle-aged guys, guys like me when I started at 48. Then I noticed in my clinic about 30% of patients are less than 40 years old. Um, and there are studies to support this. So this started clicking for me. I'm like, why are we seeing younger and younger patients? And if we ask the typical physician, the typical consumer, do we have a problem with, with our health? Most people will say, yes, we do. It's mostly linked to our obesity epidemic, to the processed foods that we're eating, a horrible diet. Um, maybe some people a little more advanced will know that maybe the... Um, um, magnetic fields all around us, the cell phones, the inactivity, all those are true, chronic stress, lack of sleep, all those are true, but they've always been there. The other big why that I've discovered is the world of the chemicals that are killing our system. Our sexuality and our masculinity is under attack by all those chemicals. This was a brand new world for me. Uh, once I started looking at EDCs, endocrine disrupting chemicals. Every time I read this, my eyes open up. Even me who's been in the testosterone world for 15 years, I only started learning about this those last three to five years. Um, again, for the viewers, endocrine disrupting chemicals are any chemicals or toxins that interfere with our normal hormone um, function. It can interfere with the hormone production. It can interfere with the transport of the hormones, and it can interfere also with the receptors of those hormones. Uh, the EPA estimates that we produce about 80,000 chemicals. There's no questions. Chemicals make our life easy. Uh, I love my plastic. Uh, uh, I used to love all my plastic containers. Uh, as a dermatologist, you know that. Of our personal care has yeah. a lot of estrogenic type compounds. Okay. And they make it much easier for you to apply. So our life is easier thanks to plastics. But we did not know all the unintended consequences that this chemical suit would do to us. And it's only now that we're starting to figure this out. I, there's an amazing book that I'd love to direct your viewers to. It's, it's written by Shana Swan, S-W-A-N, PhD. So she's a reproductive epidemiologist. And she has been in that field for more than 30 years. I had a really nice conversation with her the other day. And she really studies the impact of those EDCs on reproduction, on fertility. And it's everywhere in the news now that fertility rates are going down more than 50%. That is proven. She was able to put the link with EDCs and a decreased sperm count and sperm quality. And then I come in as the little clinician I'm like, I agree. I'm so glad that you're talking about this. But me, if you have those EDCs affecting the reproductive health system, you know, the, and I know you know that, I'm gonna go over it really quick. You know, the way um, our sperm cells are made is by the FSH from the anterior pituitary that, that helps with the cells of the testes to make sperm. But it is that same um, hypothalamus, pituitary, and um, hormonal access that gets disturbed with those EDCs. So those EDCs that affect our sperm also affect our testosterone production. So this is the little cousin of fertility that nobody's talking about. So once I started seeing that, wow, it's not just happening to older guys. A lot of younger guys are truly experiencing those symptoms. There is something else, and that's the big why. The EDCs are really affecting our younger men. Um, I don't know if you've seen a lot of those companies, those, um, they have platforms like, I don't know if I can say the name, but Hims, Roman, Keeps, those are um, telehealth platforms that you do just a telehealth visit with a physician and you get sent Viagra to your home. Those businesses are exploding. So, and, and the founder of one of those companies, 25 years old, and he came in a commercial and talked about this. First, I'm glad first that we talk about this more open. 
He's 25 years old. He said, I experienced ED. I didn't want to go to my doctor's office. So I created that platform. They just went public, lots of patients. So we do have a problem. So, and when you just take Viagra as your solution to ED, you're only masking the problem. We need to go to the root cause of the problem. We need to see why is this happening? So in my research, and again, I'm, I'm just a clinician. I lean on the researchers in the field. And there's a couple of great books. Um, this one, Count Die by, by Shana Swan. There's another great book called Astro Generation by um, yeah, Anthony Absolutely. J. Yes, amazing. He, those guys are the, they're PhDs, their they're brains are amazing. And they can really do the tedious work of linking chemicals to what we are seeing as clinicians. And when I saw that, I was like, oh my God, how come more people are not talking about this? This is a global health crisis. So typical example of what I see in the office, um, a patient will call me and will, by the time they call me, they've already tried, most of the patients who call us, they've already tried everything. They tried the, the, the over-the-counter supplement. They tried exercising more. They tried the organic route. They tried the, the supplement. They've seen either their primary care or their endocrinologist. And they tell them, no, oh, you're 32 years old. Your number's 380, you're good. Um, and, and that's when you start going down the, the bad cycle of health. It's either the T-shame the patient. They're like, no, you need to eat better. You need to exercise more. It's all in your head. Or worse, they'll put those patients on an SSRI, the anti-depression medication, which makes everything worse. So by the time they come to me, they are confused. They got T-shame. Uh, they got also what I call T-phobia. The doctors will tell them, oh, testosterone, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give you prostate cancer. You're going to have a heart attack from this. So they come to me scared. They come to me very depressed. And I usually say it's not just depression. It is this internal shame that guys tend to deal with. I explain to, to a lot of my guys. I call my patients my guys. And I call us our tribe. When I talk to my guys, I'm like, look, if you're 48, 50, 55 years old and you have a decline in your energy, you have a decline in your libido, it's kind of expected. We can help you, you'll do well, but it's kind of expected. The guy, it's not as hard a hit on their masculinity. If you have a 25, 30, 35 year old guy who starts having problems with their erection, start having problems, it may not be erection. It may just be the libido, the desire. Yes, you can get a hard on, but you feel you, your girlfriend is your roommate. If you look, you lack the drive, you lack the ambition. You're seeing that you have the gym, next day your body's hurting. So what we're seeing, there's been a shift in the curve in the age of patients with hypogonadism and those younger patients are lost because they don't understand what's happening to them. They're not getting help from their traditional doctors. Um, they, they internalize the shame. They're like, well, I guess I'm not doing enough or, or I'm a loser or I suck. And how do guys internalize things? We don't have girlfriends that we talk, we hold hands, we're like, oh my God, yeah, you can, you know, like, like you're depressed. Women do this much better than us. Guys, what we do when we go through a problem, we internalize it and we, be, we become either aggressive, passive aggressive or depressed, decreased mood. So by the time I get those patients, they've been put through the ringer into traditional conventional medicine work. So, I think one thing I've developed a lot, uh, I pride myself in the medical knowledge and the deepening of my medical knowledge. I go to a lot of conferences. I got an extra board certification to really understand that. I'm actually writing a book now called Loti Generation to explain this. But besides the medical knowledge, what I really want to bring to this space, it's a lot of empathy, a lot of understanding to say to my guys, I hear you. I get you. No, it's not in your head. Yes, your level, you at 380, um, you at 450. If you have those symptoms, we can help. There's actually a great study um, that University of Miami, I have to tell you, is doing a lot of um, headways into this. There's a, a, a reproductive uh, urologist that I'm in contact at the University of Miami called Dr. Ramasan. He produced a lot of papers. The first paper that he produced, not, not the first, one of the important ones was that guys who are less than 40 years old, they tend to experience low T symptoms at a level less than 400. So numbers, again, I know you've talked a lot about this on, on, on your um, platform. 
Numbers are not the whole story. Numbers don't tell us everything. This thing that it's 300 and 1200, if your testosterone level is three or five, you don't need testosterone. If you're 295, you need it. We know it's a spectrum. So Dr. Ramasamy was able to prove that uh, younger patients have symptoms from 400 and, and less. At least that opens the door to the American Urological Association that let's forget about that red line in the sand, if you're not below. A second paper that he produced that I think was amazing is he studied um, testosterone levels and they call them adolescents and young adult males, meaning guys who are in their teens, 18 to 20 and 25. And he was able to show that there is an overall, overall declining trend on testosterone, not just in older guys, now even in adolescents and young adult males. And of course, they were able to see that this was associated with a higher BMI, meaning obesity does play a role. But even when they took that into consideration, it still maintained a statistical trend, even when you um, take out the obesity. So meaning that it affects men even if you're not obese. And again, the big why are those EDCs. The mm -hmm. big why are those chemicals too. Um, the way I see it, we are living an experiment now that I'm scared to see what the results are gonna be in 20, 30 years. We're throwing all those chemicals at us and there's no studies. Studies are just coming out and we don't know what the outcomes are gonna be. 